Okay, okay so how many people here believe in ghosts? That's good. I 100% believe in ghosts. I've had many, many experiences. Part of me does believe in the paranormal. Part of me is still very skeptical. I very much enjoy going out and investigating. I, I find it to be uh, a little bit of a thrill. And I, I'd like it to be real. I'd like to experience something. I'd like to hear my first disembodied voice or be touched or get that concrete proof that I'm after. But so far, I haven't. And until I do, I think I'm going to remain skeptical about the paranormal. I've had experiences before when I was younger. My aunt had passed in a car accident and I saw her plain as day in my bedroom. So, and I think that's what really made me believe is that there is another side. A lot of people have experiences and a lot of it is that people don't want to tell very many people about it because there is still sort of a stigma that you might be kind of crazy if you believe in, in that. So a lot of people have spiritual experiences or experience with uh, ghosts and they don't tell anyone. I heard about the tales of the Gudgeonville Bridge back in high school, it was like eight or nine years ago. Uh, just stories traveling amongst kids. Everyone would dare each other to go out there and see if they can park their car on the bridge or walk from one side to the next all by themselves. And it just became something fun to do amongst our friends. And that's how I started hearing about the bridge. So that's something that most everyone has heard of, even if they're not from Girard, if they're from the surrounding area, they've heard of Gudgeonville. My father actually grew up about a half a mile from the bridge, so he started telling stories back when, when we were kids. So it's something that pretty much everybody in Girard has heard about or is interested in. When I moved to Girard about 20 years ago, I had heard everybody through Girard always talks about the bridge and just kind of go down there and experience it and see it. To me, it's like a relaxing kind of place to be. And I first became interested in Gudgeonville Bridge in 2003. I started going out and investigating. I took it upon myself because it's a place that you can actually go where it's open to the public. You don't need permission really to be there and you can investigate. So I started investigating, and I've been investigating for 10 years now. Psychokinesis is a big word with me, because I, I believe that's what's going on out in Gudgeonville. It's believed that uh, our ghosts and our spirits, our apparitions, what they're doing is they're, they're using their mind to affect some type of camera, an audio recorder. That's how they're imprinting I got into paranormal investigating back in 2003, however, my first stint with paranormal was simply reading books and living in New Orleans uh, for about a year. The culture, the history down there kind of, you know, sucked me in and I got interested in it. And then in 2003, I came back to Erie and uh, I was with another group at the time and it didn't last long. I wanted more out of the paranormal because I was into it. So then I formed my own group called the Paranormal Group Erie County PA. I've always been fascinated with the paranormal, mostly the hauntings and the stories and whatnot. I met up with James at an event that he was having 
after talking to him, he was telling me about the Gudgeonville Bridge that he's been studying. And one night he asked me to join him out there to maybe experience something. That night, as we were sitting there, I heard my first disembodied voice, which sounded to me like two men talking. And that's when I got hooked. There is a thrill when you capture something that you can't prove, but at the same time, you know it's real. Out here in Gudgeonville, I've been coming out here for years. Spent a lot of time investigating and researching this place. Right now what I'm doing, I'm just using my senses to hear, see if I hear anything. So I just have some audio going here. I'm gonna see if I'm picking anything up. Sometimes what I do is I won't say anything. There's a lot of people will call out. My thinking on that is if we have an intelligent type presence here, they're gonna get curious and talk. Now, they might ask questions. You know, instead of me asking questions, they might ask questions because they're curious to what I'm doing. Yeah, this is one of the spots, in my opinion, that are active out here. I usually have my audio recorder pointing in the direction of these woods here. And I usually get some, sometimes a class A type EVP, when that can be heard by everybody. Or hits on an EMF meter, static meter. Even the, uh, the tri-field meter. Tri-field meter was made to ignore all man-made type EMF. So it's only picking up natural EMF, direct current EMF, which our bodies are made up of. So it would, in my opinion, it would make more sense. You know, if you had a DC hit, it could be a, an apparition. Well, What's going here's on? Here's Jason. I'm just Hanging out, seeing what we have going on. Anything yet? Yeah, it seems to be a little bit going on. Um, thinking about setting up that this DD shadow detection device. Set it up on the guardrail, maybe. Yeah, set it up. Like where we get the activity right here. The millimeter has a shadow detector built into it, and what we'll do is on one side you'll see this little red light, and on this side. We'll have the millimeter, and if anything passes through that red light, the millimeter will sound off. And if it's none of us, and we don't see anything, it's a possible shadow person or spirit, what have you. But that's why there's people like us out there, because we go in and we research this stuff. We would work with you. What I basically tell people is, uh, if you believe it, believe it, you know, but, but do some research on it, you know, to make sure what's happening to you, you know, isn't what's happening to you. And the other side of that also is psychology, okay? You want to deal with some psychology too, okay? Because uh, in some instances, on hauntings and shadow men and things like that, you know, sometimes it's, it is psychological. I had gone down there with my daughter one evening and uh, there was a few other people there and we walked across the bridge. She had a recorder or a microphone attached to her coat and she was scared. So I told her I would walk with her to the other side of the bridge. So she was scared and we turned around and went back and when we had listened to it, we heard a woman's voice say, we were scaring her. And I believe that was the same night that we were told to get the F out. And then I said, we are getting out, so. My friend of mine, we went down there and we had taken just pictures, just still pictures. But in the pictures after I seen them, there was actually like a light when there was no light at the other end of the bridge. This was after it burned down. There was no cars, there was no street lights or anything like that, so they were and it wasn't like a flashback from, you know, from the camera or anything like that. I've heard many rumors about the bridge being haunted, and I've went to investigate for myself to see if any of those 
stories were true. I haven't experienced anything firsthand that was concrete. When I have been there, I've gotten a lot of creepy vibes. I've heard strange things off in the distance, but I've never had anything happen that was 100% scientifically proven to be concrete. August 7th, 2007, 1.30 in the morning. I'm out here doing an investigation and all of a sudden, from where I'm standing, behind me, 74 feet in the old bridge, three lights pop up out of nowhere. You're showing a light on the bridge? Not at all. Now we try and debunk these lights and we just can't do it. We try everything from mini mag lights to just measuring the light distances with a tape measure, you name it. And we can't debunk these lights. These lights will go on, however, to start a chain of events that will happen around me. Three months later, as I'm going to bed, I hear a disembodied voice tell me it's going to happen outside. After that happened, the next day, we were, I was down at uh, the Erie Horror Film Festival. Uh, we were there for the weekend doing a show. At the time, I had five people in my group, and I wanted to let them know what happened, you know, so there's some type of witness documentation to what happened. So we're sitting around at dinner, and I told everybody, you know, how I heard the voice and everything like that. The next day, which would be Saturday, nothing really happened. Uh, I, was, I was actually thinking to myself, you know, waiting for something to happen. Next day, Sunday comes around, and about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, everybody started running out. Coming down the road was a progression for the Lady of Fatima. As the progression, the parade got right where I was standing. The hair rose up on the back of my neck and my arms. It seemed to me that this is what uh, the voice was trying to tell me, that it's gonna happen outside. Now, as years go by, things will come in clearer view with me on those events. When you have the three lights, August 7th, 2007. Then you have three months later, August, September, October. Then you have three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you have three o'clock in the afternoon. Everything happens in a sequence of three. So from now on in my life, when I do things, sometimes things happen in threes. I just know, I think it's on Gunsonville Road. That's the only thing I know about the bridge at all. It's just that the road, I, th I believe, is called Gunsonville. I just always heard that it was the name of that road. At that time, it was one of only three covered bridges in Erie County, as I recall. So it's a big part of local history. People really wanted it preserved. There was a big debate with the township because it wasn't wide enough or structurally sound enough for snow plows and fire trucks and heavy trucks. But the people really wanted that bridge preserved. Well, the most popular story, there's a lot of different versions of the story, and none of them actually have been documented historically. They're all just completely legends because there's nothing written. The, the main one that I've always heard about is the, the bridge got its name because a gentleman had gone from Girard, had gone to Meadville to buy a mule. This was back in 1840, somewhere around there. And he, as he was coming back to Girard with the mule, he had to cross the bridge. And as he got on the bridge, there was a traveling circus that was very common back then, going underneath the bridge down Elk Creek, playing circus music. And the, the mule got scared and wouldn't cross the bridge. So the story goes that the farmer was so furious with the mule that he beat him to death with a stick, and then he buried him under the bridge. And the mule's name was supposedly Gudgeon, so then they kind of just dubbed that area Gudgeonville. Now, as I said, there really is no documentation of that. It's just something that built up over the years. 
I've heard stories that if you were to park your car on the bridge and uh, just turn it off that you will hear the trotting sounds of a, a mule or a horse around you. I've done it, I've never experienced it. Um, so I'm not sure how much credence I can give that story. Yeah, I have heard of many stories from Gudgeonville. Uh, there was one in particular about a mule, and then there's a story about a little girl that haunts the bridge named Darlene. I've heard stories about a girl that was killed either on the bridge or somewhere near the bridge in the general area. I have never seen anything for myself about a little girl or had any experiences involving a little girl. Uh, that seems to be where all the stories of the hauntings stem from, is somewhere about a little girl and her death at the bridge. That event actually happened. She was the same age as my brother, who's a couple of years older than me, and she was actually a friend of ours. She was about six or seven when she died. I'm here at Lookout Point out in Gudgeonville. Now, imagine a little girl, her name's Darlene, she's walking down the pathway here with her mother on a Sunday afternoon. She comes close to the edge and she loses her footing and starts to go over. Her mother grabs her by the ankle and tries to hold on and fails. Darlene falls 225 feet face first into the creek below. Now, at the time she fell, there was a gentleman playing football in the field behind me came over and comforted Darlene. One gentleman gave her her jacket. Now, they waited patiently for the ambulance to come pick her up. However, Darlene passed away on the way to the hospital. Now I'm standing down at the bridge. Behind me is another perspective of the fall itself. When you look behind me, you can see the height 225 feet cliff that she fell from. Now, it's rumored, and we always hear people telling us that Darlene's spirit still lingers here at Gudgeonville. Some people say they see her falling from the cliff at nighttime. Some people say they hear her screaming or crying for her mother. Mommy. Although the old bridge isn't here and we have the new bridge built, we can think to ourselves that maybe Darlene's spirit does haunt this place. Hey, we're here in East Springfield Cemetery. It's April 19th, 2015. The reason we're here is back April 19th, 1964, there was a little girl that fell off the cliff out in Gudgeonville. We're here today simply because I come out every year. I feel there's a connection between that little girl and I. Now Jason's here with me today. This is the first time he's come out with me to visit the gravesite. Being here for the first time and actually putting it together along with the evidence that we've captured down at Gudgeville, it kind of tear-jerking to realize that there was a tragic death with a little girl. And it's a shame that she had to move on and lose her life. Okay, real quickly, uh, the different types of hauntings, okay? Uh, the main types of hauntings, okay? Again, parapsychology is an apparition haunting, okay? A haunt and a poltergeist. It's three main types of hauntings, okay? But nowadays, with so many paranormal groups and teams out there, we're coming up with different types of hauntings, okay? Uh, the most popular type of haunting that really is out there is uh, uh, apparitional, uh, residual type haunting. Now, why would Darlene's spirit be resting or walking this area. Well, it's believed whenever you have a traumatic death that sometimes you'll have a restless spirit that gets lost and just doesn't cross over. Now, Darlene's spirit 
can be walking amongst the area down by the bridge, or she could even be up here in a sense of a residual haunting. It's where the spirit plays over and over and over, repeating itself like energy trapped in time. For me, I do honestly believe that she is out there and she does call the Gudgeonville Bridge area home. She's friendly. She does like to play little tricks, but nothing malevolent or evil, nothing like that. She's very friendly. To me, she seems like a caring little girl and she does get curious on who goes out there. December of 2011, I had a near-death experience. During my near-death experience, all I heard was a woman's voice telling me, feed the people and you're going to be okay now. After the heart attack, some things changed for me. I was still actively investigating Gudgeonville and still searching for more answers on Darlene, a little girl who fell off the cliff. I was still compelled to see if I could find a picture of this little girl. For six years, I was asking a local historian, you know, if she could get me the photo. While I was in the hospital, she apparently found a photo of Darlene and sent it to me. On February 3rd, I come back to my apartment and I'm going through my emails. And there's an email from the Gerard historian attachment of photo of Darlene. There's a picture of the old Gudgeonville Bridge there. Uh, unfortunately, in 2008, it was burnt down. But I still worked out there. A historic piece of Erie County history went up in flames early this morning after vandals torched the Gudgeonville covered bridge. Witnesses say someone inside an SUV threw a Molotov cocktail, and moments later, the 140 year old bridge was engulfed in flames. Within minutes after the first 911 call went in, flames were shooting 100 feet into the air from the Gudgeonville Bridge. That the historic Gudgeonville Bridge over Elk Creek was in flames. The covered bridge, built in the mid-1800s, is the oldest of three covered bridges in Erie County. Vandals and small fires have damaged it in the past, but this time a piece of Erie County history was destroyed. People were very upset from a practical purpose. It was a detour for people. They Now they had to go couple miles out of their way, 15, 20 minutes out of their way to go where they had to go. But more than that, I think they just felt it was a slap in the face. They knew right away they were almost positive it was arson. They knew that someone had burned down a big piece of history and that made them really, really upset. I couldn't believe that someone actually could do something like that to a place that I think is just, it was just so beautiful. Everybody talked about it in Girard. I mean, everybody was almost kind of like devastated in a way. Hoped obviously that they had found the people that had done it, which I believe they did, and it was, it was horrible, it was terrible. The arsonists were caught, I believe both sentenced to prison. I couldn't tell you the disposition at, at this time. They were caught, I believe in January, the fire was in November, so I think it was about less than two months afterwards, state police made the arrest. The bridge was built in 1868 and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. Today, all that remains of that bridge is a burned out shell. I think anything tragic that happens at a place, whether it be a fire like what happened or the little girl falling, for example, I think it kind of puts that in stone, you know, in stones. I believe that the Gudgeonville area is still haunted, not so much the bridge itself, but the land. Even though the bridge burnt down, the running water, the shale rock, the new concrete pillars that hold the bridge up can hold that energy and keep it grounded there. Yeah, I have been out there since the, re, the reconstruction of the new bridge. Um, the old bridge was definitely a little intimidating and menacing when you first pulled up. And I think that really helped add to the credence behind the bridge being haunted. The new bridge, you still get a similar feeling being out there, but I think the overall ominence of the bridge uh, 
was a lot more menacing whenever it was an old covered bridge and you're completely enclosed walking through this allegedly haunted bridge. Whereas now it's open and you have a 360 view all around you. I think that takes away from the thrill a little bit of experiencing and investigating the area. But the new bridge, uh, I still feel the presence is still there watching over you. My personal opinion, and I have nothing to base this on but my opinion, but I don't think the bridge had anything to do with it. I think it's the just the area. It's in a wooded area. If you walk back in the woods behind the Battles Museums, which is very close to Gudgeonville, it's very spooky, and I can't really put my finger on it. I'm not the kind of person who f feels things or you know senses things, but it, it's creepy. We feel that there still is activity going on after the bridge burnt down. It seemed a little quiet for a while. However, when we started going out there again, it started picking up again. I believe that there's many spirits out there. I believe it's the land that's haunted, not just the structure of the old covered bridge. You have a lot of history there. There used to be an old gudgeon mill where they made uh, wagon wheels. You even go farther back in history, you had Native Americans that uh, frequented the land. There's a lot going on, in my opinion, out there. I think the three lights have an impact on me, even after my heart attack. I feel that it's meant for me to go out and give people a message of faith, hope, and belief. So yes, I do believe that I was blessed to be able to put forth a message that I feel I'm obligated to put out there to everybody. I do feel a connection with the bridge. There's been times where I've woken up out of a sound sleep telling me, go to the, the bridge. bridge. Once we got down there, there would always be some type of activity going on, new evidence to prove that there's activity going on. It's something that I've always believed. Um, I just think that there's a lot more to the world than meets the eye and that it stands to reason that so many millions of people have had experiences with spirits that there has to be something. I personally have never seen a spirit. I don't particularly want to, <laughs> um, but no, I have no personal experience. It's just something that I think is real. I believe that there are ghosts down there, but I don't believe, I've never felt like evil or, you know, anything that's made me uncomfortable because I usually sense that when I'm at a place and there I don't feel that at all. Yeah, I don't think there's anything malevolent about the Gungeonville Bridge at all. Um, I believe that there's many spirits out there that can be peaceful and just are stuck here in between realms and I think that that's the case of the Gungeonville Bridge, if it happens to be haunted. I think Gungeonville's haunted, and, and I truly believe that, even though I can't prove it. So I just think they're irritated with things that go on down there sometimes. Kids go down and party and cause ruckus, and I think they get irritated. As an investigator, I believe if you are respectful to the spirits that are down at the Gudgeonville Bridge, you will get more activity. If you go down there and yell, scream, taunt, party, you're not gonna get nothing. They're just gonna shy away. Over the years, paranormal has exploded because of ghost hunting TV shows that depict demonic possessions. When we think of apparitions, ghosts and spirits. Not all of them are demonic. I believe the spirit energy at the bridge, it's not malevolent. Think of them as people. You don't want to taunt, you don't want to call names, you don't want to act out of line. They want respect, give them respect. They need respect. Just as they are going to respect you, respect them and you'll have a nice experience.